Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Daniel James, and as always, if you're new here, welcome. Today, I want to talk about how we stay motivated on your self-improvement journey, because sometimes life gets tough, and sometimes we run out of steam and momentum, and the things can start to take a bit of a backwards turn, and some days, it can just be really tough, and we can't be bothered, and we're not motivated. So what can we do when we get into that headspace? Well, today, I want to share with you three tips that you can do and if you stick with me till the end, one of the tips has got a really useful little prompt that I think will help you to kind of unpick something that may be holding you back. So the first thing that we can do when we're feeling unmotivated is adopt a win the day mentality. I talk about this a lot with my clients. A lot of the times we get so fixated on this long-term goal that we've got, this, this big end result that we've got. And when we're so fixated on that big end result, of course, we're going to lose motivation. It's almost like going for a long run, starting a marathon you've never ran before and you're going to start a marathon. It can be really depressing to know how many miles or kilometers you've got left. But if you adopt a win the day mentality, then it can really radically change that because what happens is you're just focusing on that one step, that one thing each day and it slowly builds up. Just like you build a house, it's one brick at a time. How do you achieve that goal? one day at a time, one step at a time. And what we can do is we can take this big, massive goal that we've got and start to chunk it down. So we take this big, let's say five-year goal, break that five-year goal into a one-year goal, then that one-year goal into monthly goals, monthly goals into weekly goals, and then weekly goals into daily goals. And then each day when we wake up, we create what's called a power list. Now this power list is critical things that you are gonna do each day that just move your life forward. They're actionable steps. There are things that you can choose to do or not do. So it's not, for example, feeding yourself. That would not be something on the power list because you have to feed yourself. It's something that's a choice. If you do it, it moves your life forward. If you don't do it, you stay where you are. And what you do is by creating this power list, I would suggest if you've never done anything like this before, just pick three things, three things that you're going to do each day that just tick you over and move you forward towards your goal. What starts to happen is you start to build momentum because... These small little wins motivate you. At the end of each day, if you just track back and like, wow, I actually won the day. First of all, it sounds good to say, wow, I won the day. And then at the end of the week, if you can look back and see, actually, do you know what? I've won every day this week. That then starts to breed momentum. And even if you're not bothered, I can't be motivated. Rather than doing nothing, three tasks doesn't actually sound that bad and that daunting so every day just doing these three things that are going to move you forward i say small things some of them may be big things it could be finish that project or email that person but it all adds up just like a brick brick after brick after brick this over this overwhelm can be one of the biggest things that stops us we're just so fixated on that big end goal and it, it is daunting but we stack the wins but more importantly reflect on the wins because when you win the days you win the weeks when you win the weeks you win the months when you win the months you win the year that's how the game of life works it's that big goal you want you do it by just winning the day and winning the day is not that daunting so second thing that we can do to stay motivated when it comes to achieving our goals on this self-improvement journey is adopt an identity shift because a lot of the time we try and use willpower now willpower is a something that's perishable, meaning it gets depleted. And they did a study on this. Now, I can't remember with my notes here, I should have actually gone to research this study in more detail, but again, you can research it yourself. And it was the cookies and the radish uh, experiment. And what they did was they gave a group of kids, they split them in half, so let's say it's 100 kids, split them 50-50, and they gave half the kids a plate of cookies and radishes. They gave the other half the same plate of cookies and radishes. But for the first 50, they said, eat as many cookies as you want unlimited cookies not a problem the second group they said you can't touch the cookies but you can have as many radishes as you want and obviously the first group used no willpower because they were just sat there and like okay cool like brilliant eat as many radishes eat as many cookies as i want to no one's interested in radishes the second group had to use a, quite a bit of willpower not to eat the cookies the cookies are there they're looking amazing they're smelling nice so willpower is going to be depleted there then what they did is they took both groups and said to them, right, go and complete this impossible task. And this is where, you can't quote me on this, but the, the, the group that had used their willpower by rejecting the cookies, they quit something like 20 or 30% sooner than the group that hadn't used their willpower. 
they just gave up. They got frustrated a lot easier, they got irritated and they just gave up. And this is for us in real life. When we're trying to achieve this goal, this thing we're doing on, on our journey, if we're trying to will ourselves, if we're trying to force ourselves to do things, we're like, oh, I don't really want to do it, but I have to do it. I have to do it. I have to do it. And what ends up happening is we, we're using willpower and then it gets depleted. So what we need to do is we need to stop trying. Stop trying to reach our goals. Stop trying to improve and adapt the actual mentality and identity of I am doing. So let's say, for example, when we're on this uh, self-improvement journey, let's say you, you want to improve, uh, I don't know, your uh, time management. Well, I'm saying I'm trying to improve my time management. You're saying I am somebody that's got a really good grip of my time management. I am that person. I'm not trying to be, I am that person. Because when you start to adopt that identity, you start to act differently. So for example, someone that's trying to get themselves in shape, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Okay. But if you adopt the mentality of, I am a fit and healthy person, you then start to ask yourself, okay, well, what would a fit and healthy person do? When you're faced with choices each day, if you've adopted this identity of the person that you want to be, you ask yourself, okay, well, what would they do? And you make decisions based on the future you rather than the actual reality of the situation you're in right now. Can we see the difference? And there's a, a, a thing I use with uh, my clients here about people quitting smoking. I say to my clients, there's two people trying to quit smoking. And when they're offered a cigarette, one says, no thanks, I don't smoke. And the other one says, no thank you, I'm trying to quit. Which one do you think caved in? The person said, no thanks, I'm trying to quit. Because they're saying, I'm, I identify, I'm still a smoker. I still do what smokers do, but I'm trying not to do that. They're going to cave because you're the person said, no thank you, I don't smoke. So they're trying to quit smoking, but they've adopted the mentality of, no thanks, I don't smoke. So they've presented me with this choice. That's not something that a non-smoker would do. So I'm not going to engage in it. So if you're struggling to stay motivated, start to adopt the mentality of, I am that person. And start to act in accordance with being that person. And again, this may sound a bit crazy if you've never done something like this before, but it's so, so powerful. And if you're struggling to say things like, I am that person, just say, I am in the process of becoming that person. Just the very act of saying that to yourself, you are in fact in the process of doing that. But that identity shift is so, so powerful. So the, the key things that I work on clients with, and it all starts with how you talk about yourself and how you see yourself in the world. And the final thing that we can do to stay motivated on our self-improvement journey is become very aware of who we're hanging around with. Because a lot of the time on this self-improvement journey, it can become lonely. And because of this, we can start to isolate ourselves. And when we isolate ourselves, we actually make it harder for ourselves. And it's very, very hard to go it alone. And when we're trying to do it alone, and we're trying to, again, force this thing to happen, it can very easily lead to burnout because we're trying to make something happen. We don't have a support network around us and we can get inside our own heads. And that old identity, just like a bungee cord, we're trying to step away from that old version. We're trying to step away, trying to step away. And at a certain point, that bun bungee cord will snap us right back and then we can get disappointed we can get disheartened and then we just quit and throw in the towel so when we're on this journey and we're starting to feel unmotivated start to surround yourself with people that are on similar paths to you on a similar path of self-improvement just have to be the same journey as you but at least try and hang around with people that are wanting to improve their life because if you're stuck in an environment where people are being lazy and slobbish and they're not really interested and they're happy with where they are they've settled nothing wrong with that by the way but if that's not the path that you're on it's going to be very hard for you to stay motivated when there's no one around you to keep you on track. And if you can get what I call like a growth tribe around you, people that have got this growth mindset and they want to improve and they'll challenge you and they'll help you and they'll support you, it becomes so much easier. It's something that I've done with my public speaking. I've joined a public speaking group. Bear in mind that I get paid good money to speak. I'm a good speaker, very competent speaker, but with some very big organizations. But I wanted to improve my public speaking. I didn't have anyone around me that I knew that was trying to improve public speaking. So I joined a public speaking group. And because of this, there's people there that are further along the journey than me. And it's amazing to see because it's actually leveled me up as a speaker. For those long-term listeners of the podcast, you'll see, hopefully, that I'm a lot more articulate. I'm slower when I talk. I pause. I've got more emphasis on certain words. And that comes from these people that are further along. But not only that, I'm able to help people that are just starting out their journey. And because of that, it cements things that maybe I've forgotten or I need to actually brush up on. 
it's so powerful to have this amazing support support network of people that are on the same journey and they want to help you win. Maybe you don't have to do all three of these things, but I would suggest just listen back and pick one of these things that you can do to stay motivated on your self-improvement journey and start to implement it now. If you've taken anything from today's episode, don't forget to like and share it with a friend. And if you are a long-term listener and you're taking value from this, if you listen to this on Apple Podcast or Spotify, please go to the podcast homepage and leave us a review. It massively, massively is appreciated. Until next time, take it easy.